Hare Krishna devotees, welcome to Shloka Day. Today's Shloka is Shloka number 27 of chapter 9. Yat karo shiya dashnasi. Yat karo shiya dashnasi. Yat juho shida dasi yat. Yat juho shida dasi yat. Yat tapasya si kaunteya. Yat tapasya si kaunteya. Tat kurushvama darpanam. Tat kurushvama darpanam. Put forward meaning and translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Jai. Yat. Yat. Whatever. Whatever. Karoshi. Karoshi. You do. You do. Yat. Yat. Whatever. Whatever. Ashnasi. Ashnasi. You eat. You eat. Yat. Yat. Whatever. Whatever. Juhoshi. Juhoshi. You offer. You offer. Dadasi. Dadasi. You give away. You give away. Yat. Yat. Whatever. Whatever. Yat. Yat. Whatever. Whatever. Tapasyasi. Tapasyasi. Austerities you perform. Austerities you perform. Kaunteya. Kaunteya. O son of Kunti. O son of Kunti. Tat. Tat. That. That. Kurushva. Kurushva. Do. Do. Mat. Mat. Unto me. Unto me. Arpanam. Arpanam. As an offering. As an offering. Translation. Whatever you do. Translation. Whatever you do. Whatever you eat. Whatever you eat. Whatever you offer or give away. Whatever you offer or give away. And whatever austerities you perform. And whatever austerities you perform. Do that, O son of Kunti. Do that, O son of Kunti. As an offering to me. As an offering to me. <clears throat> so the first distinction between Shloka 26 and Shloka 27 is that in Shloka 26, there is no use of the word bhakti. So you can see in the translation, there is no presence of the word with love and devotion. So what does the Shloka mean? Even if you don't have devotion for the Supreme Lord, even then you should offer everything to him. So Prabhupada writes, <clears throat> Thus, it is the duty of everyone to mold his life in such a way that he will not forget Krishna in any circumstance. Everyone has to work for maintenance of his body and soul together, and Krishna recommends herein that one should work for him. Everyone has to eat something to live. Therefore, he should accept the remnants of foodstuffs offered to Krishna. Any civilized man has to perform some relig religious ritualistic ceremonies. Therefore, Krishna recommends, do it for me. And this is called Archana. Everyone has a tendency to give something in charity. Krishna says, give it to me. And this means that all surplus money accumulated should be utilized in furthering the Krishna consciousness movement. Nowadays, People are very much inclined to the meditational process, which is not practical in this age. But if anyone practices meditating on Krishna 24 hours a day, by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra around his beads, he is surely the greatest meditator and the greatest yogi, as substantiated by the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. In the sixth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord concludes by saying, of all of the different types of transcendentalists, people pursuing different Vedic paths, the bhakti yogis 
uh, the topmost and he says that is his opinion. So going on to a few other aspects of the shloka which um, uh, I have gleaned from um, other Vaishnavas commentary on this particular shloka. Tat kurushva madarpanam. Krishna is saying, you offer that to me. So Krishna is not using the word bhakti over here. So what Krishna is saying, the principle of offering to him is also auspicious. So here, neither bhakti is mentioned, not, nor ashnami is mentioned. So Krishna doesn't say explicitly that I will accept it. That doesn't mean Krishna will reject it. In the previous shloka, the Lord clearly states that if you offer these four things with love and devotion, I will accept it. In this shloka, the Lord has not said I will accept it. But at the same time, he is saying, offer everything, anything and everything that you do. The Lord is clearly instructing us that we should offer it to him, which means we don't have love and devotion in our heart for Krishna. Nevertheless, if we offer it to him, it is auspicious for us. Krishna is not saying he'll accept it, but at the same time, Krishna is not saying he will reject it. So when we offer food to Krishna and a pure devotee offers food to Krishna, is there any difference? Yes, there is a difference in the quality of devotion. And naturally, there is a difference in the quality of reciprocation. But still, that doesn't mean that everyone who doesn't have pure devotion is left out of the world of devotion. Proportionate to our devotion, Krishna reciprocates. So in the previous verse, emphasis is on Ashnami and Bhaktya. But here, the emphasis on the principle of offering. Krishna is saying, Tat Kurushvamadarpanam. You offer it to me. And Krishna is saying by this, you will get auspiciousness. You will get purified. You may not get love for Krishna right away by offering everything that you're using to him first. But it is certainly auspicious for you. Essentially, the Lord is saying, all actions that we perform should be offered to him. So this is from a different um, lineage a commentary. In the previous verse, Sri Krishna stated that all objects should be offered to him. Patram, Pushvam, Palam, Toyam. Now he says that all actions should also be offered to him. Very often, people separate devotion from their daily life and look on it as something that is only to be performed inside the temple room. So sometimes we think, Devotion means sitting in the puja room and doing puja for an hour. That is devotion. But the Lord has expanded the very definition of devotion to include everything that we do in our life. However, devotion is not to be restricted to the periphery of the temple room. It is to be engaged in at every moment of our life. Narada Bhakti Darshan, Sutra 19. Devotion means offering your every activity to God and feeling intense separation if ever you lose remembrance of him. So actual devotion means that if you can't remember Krishna, you feel intense separation. When works are dedicated and mentally delivered to God, it is called arpanam. Such an attitude metamorphoses the mundane activities of material life into divine service of God. Without realizing its significance, many people say the following verse in temples, Kaina Vacha Manasendri Erva Buddhyatmanaba Vanushita Swabhava Karoti Yadyat Sakalam Parasmai Narayana Yeti Samarpayetat Bhagavatam Canto 11, Chapter 2, Shloka 36. The shloka translates as whatever one does with body, words, mind, senses and intellect in accordance with one's individual nature should be offered to the Supreme Lord Narayan. However, this act of offering is not to be done at the end of the work by merely reciting mantras 
such as Shri Krishnaya Samarpanamastu, etc., as is done in the Vedic rituals. It is to be done while performing the action itself by maintaining the consciousness that we are working for the pleasure of the Lord. Having stated that, all works should be offered to him. Shri Krishna now lists the benefits of doing so, which will come in the upcoming shlokas. So His Grace Chaitanya Charan Prabhu says, don't give your leftovers to Krishna. The very idea of giving Krishna our leftovers may shock our devotional sensibilities. We usually give leftovers such as food to beggars, not to the Supreme Lord. Yet we might unwittingly end up giving him our leftovers with respect to our time and thought. Remember we said, <clears throat> Krishna is not looking um, at our capabilities. He is looking at our availability. So if you keep Krishna last, that's like giving him your leftovers. So we have to keep Krishna first, always. We often invest our time and thought in our many worldly aspirations. And then whatever is left over in terms of time, we offer it to Krishna through some devotional activities that we squeeze into our schedule. Such offerings express not heartfelt devotion, but reluctant accommodation. Such a powerful statement here. Only if we have time, we worship Krishna. Because we are too busy with our other material activities. Our prioritization is the expression of our devotion. Or at least our sincere intention to attain that devotion as quickly as possible. So Krishna has to be the number one priority all the time. No doubt. Whatever we offer Krishna is auspicious. It will contribute to our eternal spiritual credit. The Bhagavad Gita, this particular shloka, urges us to offer whatever we do to him. This verse underscores his compassion. He's going out of his way to help us kickstart our spiritual journey. The Lord is so magnanimous, so merciful. Even if you don't have love, affection, and devotion to him, he's still telling you, you know what? Whatever you do in your life, just offer it to me. To let us know, even that will give you benefit. While putting Krishna first might seem difficult given our many other obligations and aspirations, we can rest assured that he won't replace the things that are truly important for us. Instead, he will permeate them. By his mercy and guidance, our devotional connection will underlie and unify our various activities with a divine purposefulness. So the Lord actually helps you with your devotional activities. Until he permeates every aspect of our life. This will harmonize our material and spiritual sides gradually transforming our life into a symphony of devotion that is all around fulfilling. So yes, we have a lot of material responsibilities. We have families to take care of. We have so many other priorities in life. But Krishna should not be the last priority and the last thought. He should be the first priority and the first thought. Even if we don't have devotion for him, Krishna is saying, at least, whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you give away in charity, whatever other tapasyas that you're undertaking, you do that for him. He does not say he will accept it. But definitely there is benefit to it, which we will see in the upcoming shlokas. If you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel and turn on the bell notification. If you'd like to join our classes every day, please check the details in the description section of this video. We look forward to serving you.